Okay, AP Stat, as promised, you are receiving a review video. You're welcome. Okay, so this is just, I've taken the, um, at the end of your review page, there's a list of things to be able to do, and I've just taken that and kind of added in some things and left room in this uh, document that I have right here to write stuff to you. So, anyway. So all of the stuff in black that you see here, it's all listed um, at the end of your review. All right, so the first thing we're gonna talk about, identify variables as categorical or quantitative. Please remember that categorical can be numeric. Quantitative always is numeric. So please be careful. Things that are categorical and numeric, uh, zip code, area code, um, Social security number. Always ask yourself, if you're looking at numeric data, does it make sense to take the average of this? Uh, the average zip code is. Well, that's silly because it depends on where you live. So anyway. All right. So what advantages one kind of graphical display has over another? So I thought I would just use a little you know, checklist type situation here for you to see this. So it retains the data. In other words, you can look at the graph and you can say, oh, there's that many pieces of data at that value. Um, the dot plot allows you to do that because you can count the dots on the, um, on the x-axis. You can see where they are and how many there are. Um, the other one that does that for us is the stem plot because the stem plot, the numbers create the shape. All right, small data sets. Well, the graphs that are best for small data sets are anything that you would have to write. So that would be uh, your stem plot and your dot plot again, because you would have to create dots or write the numbers themselves. Larger data sets, of course, are best for histogram and box plots. Comparison graphs are uh, box plots and stem plots. Be careful with that one because you can compare histograms and dot plots, but anytime you're asked to create a comparison graph, box plot and stem plot are the way to go. Those are the best ones for comparing. Okay, uh, shows your shape well. Uh, dot plots do a good job of this, histograms and stem plots as well. Box plots, uh, not so much. I mean, if the arms are really long, you can tell if it's really skewed, and you can tell um, also if the median is like really close to the edge of the boxes or something like that. Shows outliers, just the one. That would be the box plot. Remember, it's the one that shows us outliers. Okay, how to run an outlier test using the entire data set or a five number summary. Well, no matter what you do, whether you're using the entire data set or the five number summary, an outlier test requires that you know Q3 and Q1. And then of course you have to remember the formula. And remember the formula for the outlier test is Q3 plus 1.5 times the IQR. Remember the IQR is Q3 minus Q1. And then Q1 minus 1.5 times IQR. And remember that when you run the outlier test, the values you get here and here, those are just boundaries that tell you, okay, all right, if I draw those boundaries in my data, does the lowest point fall below this value and does the highest point fall above that one? If the answer is yes, those are outliers. Okay, know how to describe the main features of a distribution using CUS and BS. It is so important that you pay attention when you're describing a distribution. Don't just start going, well, the shape is symmetric and the uh, I would use the mean and I would use the standard deviation and there are no unusual features. That is not a discussion. A, an adequate and appropriate discussion and communication is using your context and specifically stating the distribution of, there's your context, okay, has a mean value at da da da, standard deviation value at da da da, and it's symmetric, no unusual features, something like that. You must include your context at any time you can be specific about the center or the shape, or sorry, not the shape, but the spread, you need to be. So if you have measures for mean and standard deviation, use what you're given. Don't round them, just use the ones you have. Same with median and IQR. 
All right, so the next thing here, we've got know which, which measures of center and spread go along with each distribution shape. So I pretty much said that just a second ago. Symmetric, we have mean and standard deviation, non-symmetric, median, and IQR. I noticed on the quiz, several of you talked about the mean and the IQR. They don't go together. These two go together, and these two go together, and they don't mix up, ever. All right. Oh, and keep in mind, when you have a box plot... Since your median is what shows up, it doesn't matter if that thing is skewed, symmetric, whatever it is, the median, it is always appropriate to talk about the median. All right, I know, I'm rambling, sorry kids. Okay, know how the mean and median relate to each other depending on the distribution shape. All right, so let's look at this. If I've got a fairly symmetric distribution, something like this, then the mean and median are gonna be pretty much right on top of each other, okay? The median and the mean, which is X bar, those two are going to be pretty, pretty close to each other. They really, really are. But if you have a situation like this, let's say we've got some data that's shaped like this. That means there's some values out here that are causing this skewed left shape. If that happens, then your median's probably gonna land somewhere right here. And your mean is going to be lower than that because of these values out here. Same thing if it's skewed to the right. Let's say most of your data is here and then you've got um, some values out here causing this right skew. Well, your median is going to be about right here, but your mean is going to be higher than your median. Because remember, we're always following this idea as we read left to right, your numbers are getting higher as you move right. All right, so know how to read an ogive. I'm not gonna go back over that right now. Understand that standard deviation and IQR are both measures of spread or variability. The larger they are, the more variable your data. Here's an example. If I give you a picture of this distribution right here, okay, it's spread out from here to here. But if I give you something like this, it's got more variability than this one does because it's more spread out. So when we talk about spread and variability, I want you to think of this. Spread and variability, they're synonymous. They mean the exact same thing. It's how spread out your data is. Within spread and variable, we have specific measures. So the specific measures Those specific measures, there are three of them. We have the range, we have the IQR, and we have the standard deviation. All right, when you don't have the data, when you just have the graph, like let's say you just have a histogram, you can only see the range. That's it. You can, um, if you've got a box plot, you can see the IQR, okay, and you can estimate it. Standard deviation, you must have the data so that you can find it using the formula. You don't have to use the formula, you plug it into something like Staplet to find it, but this requires the data. Or it will be given to you, all right? So IQR, or sorry, let's go back. Range, that is just the max minus the minimum. And to get the range, it is one value. You subtract the minimum from the range, from the maximum. So your range is a number value. It is the most simplistic form of spread. IQR, IQR can be estimated from a box plot. It can be found um, specifically if you have Q1 and Q3. Standard deviation requires that you have the data or it has to be given to you, all right? Because it's much more specific. All right, now let's move on here. Know how outliers affect the mean and standard deviation. Well, remember, mean and standard deviation are not resistant. That means that when there are extreme values, like we had up here in my pictures, anytime that happens, the mean and the standard deviation will follow those extreme values. It will be higher or lower than the majority of the data, depending on which way those extreme values are. 
And the standard deviation is even more resistant than the mean is, simply because of the amount of calculation that goes into the formula. All right, know how to create a stem plot. You can create everything, your histogram, stem plot, and block, box plot all in Staplet. But for those of you watching the video or listening to the video, um, happy news, you don't have to upload anything on the test. So there's your reward for watching this. Okay, so know how to construct a comparative plot and compare two distributions. So again, you're not gonna have to upload anything, but you must talk about two distributions. Please, please go back and revisit the comments that I made on your quiz. Some of you did a great job at comparing, comparing two distributions, some of you did not. Know how to analyze which measures describe a distribution best. Well, the measures that describe a distribution are based on the shape of that distribution. So always keep that in mind. If you've got, um, if you've got something that's really nice and symmetric, talk about the mean and standard deviation. Okay, so I want to take just a moment, just kind of as just a representation here. Decide what kind of data you have. If you have categorical, and yeah, my handwriting is going to be sloppy and I don't want any judgment, okay? It's been a long day. It hasn't really, I'm just messing around. Okay, so quantitative and categorical. If it's categorical, you can graph a bar chart, a segmented bar chart, a pie chart, those are pretty, and a dot plot. You can also use a dot plot. If it's quantitative, you can use a dot plot. That's the only, that's the only one that you can use for either kind of data. You can use a histogram. You can use a box plot. Or you can use a stem plot. And again, I talked to you at the beginning of the video about all of the ways we use these compared to which one's better for showing what. All right, let's see. I think that's all I need to talk to you about, I hope. Hopefully I haven't forgotten anything. Oh yeah, um, when it's quantitative, it makes sense to talk about symmetry. All right, so when you're dealing with quantitative data, you always want to talk about your shape first. That's your S, one of your S's in CUS and BS, remember? So you're always going to start with shape, and then based on that, you're either going to have symmetric, symmetric, I can't even talk. You're either going to have a symmetrical distribution, I'm so broken, or non-symmetrical. And no, I'm not going to start this video over because I said something funny. <laughs> All right, so symmetrical, remember we talk about the mean for the center and the standard deviation for the spread. All right, so that takes care of the center and both of those. And then, of course, you're going to talk about any unusual features. Usually, um, in a symmetric distribution, there usually aren't anything unusual going on, but that doesn't mean that you can't have a situation where you've got a symmetric distribution that also has weird values because you could have high and low uh, outliers that are still causing that symmetry, that balance to happen. So, you know, it could happen. So this no unusual features isn't necessarily always the time or all the time. I tell you what, it's time for me to stop this video. Hey, have a great time studying kids. <laughs>